anybody sees me lately, they want to know about this. I broke it a month ago, just before field day at school, so I couldn't enter any events, and I didn't get a chance to win any prizes. But I don't want to talk about my arm right now. It's something else. See this envelope? I've had it since Friday afternoon, and it's Monday morning now. I tried to tell everybody at my house about it, somebody. I mean, what would you do about it? If you had it and it was Monday morning, and you were waiting for your teacher, Well, to tell the story right, I'd better go back to last Friday afternoon, right after school let out. I like Wheeler Avenue School. I like the sixth grade especially. This is Mr. Bourbon. I like him a lot. He's the best teacher I ever had. I almost hate to graduate. I'm book monitor. Mr. Bourbon thought it might be a little too hard after this happened, but I talked him into keeping me. I mean, gee whiz, a broken arm shouldn't ruin your life. Hey, Steve, where are you going? This is my friend Freddie coming. Mr. Bergman's going to coach us for the spelling bee. Now? After school? Why are you still here? Miss Adams is going to give me my field day medal. I thought they were going to give it to you on a platform, graduation day. They are. Miss Adams said I could take it home to show my father. Then I have to give it back to graduation. Hmm. My father said he's going to put it in the den, in a fray on blue velvet. Why? I'll come over to your house tonight and show you, okay? Sure. You can help me study my spelling. I'll see you. I know Freddie's my friend and all, but all of a sudden everybody's getting medals and here I am. Well, my father says don't cry over spilt milk. I guess that means over broken arms, too. Well, anyway, I was in Mr. Bergman's room last Friday, and that's how I got the envelope. Here, I'll show you. Oh, yeah, my name's Steve. Very good, Margaret. Will any of the words we're studying this afternoon be in the contest Monday? Oh, only I know that, and I'm not telling. Now, paradox. Want to try again, Steve? P-A-R... I don't know, Mr. Bergman. I don't even know what it means. Oh, sure you do, Steve. We had paradox early in the term. Anybody? Paradox. P-A-R-A-D-O-X. And it means when something seems true one way, but is really true another way instead. Oh, very good, Sue. <laughs> and Steve himself is a bit of a paradox today, isn't he? He's one of the best spellers in the class. And yet today, he's gotten every word wrong. I didn't mean for you to hear that. Well, now you know. I guess everybody's a bit nervous at this point. Well, I think that's enough for now. Steve, collect the books. Monday's going to be a big day, but it's not only a spelling bee. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Study well, but don't worry. Have a good weekend. You'd like to win that medal on Monday, wouldn't you? Sure I do. Everybody does. But not everybody is letting it throw them. Huh? Ten children were selected from the entire sixth grade. That means you are in the top ten out of more than 70 pupils. But you'd never know it today. And I think I know the reason why. Do you, Mr. Bergman? You're pushing too hard. It wouldn't have anything to do with that arm, would it? And the fact that you couldn't compete on field day? Well, it seems like anybody can win a medal on graduation day, except me. By anybody, you mean your sister Marjorie. Didn't she win the uh, Scholastic Achievement Medal when she graduated? Yeah. It's on the desk in the upstairs hall, right where everybody can see it. It's been there three years now, staring at me. And you'd like just one little teeny medal for that desk in the hall, isn't that it? I guess so. Well, you may get that spelling medal, Steve, if you don't panic. But it's not worth getting sick over. So you didn't see an envelope on the desk here, did you? No, Mr. Bergman. Well, I, must, I guess I must have tucked it in here with these papers. 
Well, don't let Marjorie's shadow worry you, Steve. Or Freddie's either, for that matter. See you Monday, huh? Mr. Bergman's smart, all right. He saw how much I wanted that medal right off, didn't he? Well, what I just showed you in there is the only way I can think of how I got the envelope. And I picked these up off the desk. I didn't know I had it then, of course. I didn't know till later. This is where I live. My father built that fence. He's a druggist, but he built things, too. I helped him. This is my mom. She surprises me every day with a different sandwich when I get home. See you, Bob. Today it's, mmm, peanut butter and bananas on health bread. Gee, Mom, peanut butter and bananas, huh? On health bread. Where have you been? Mr. Bergman was called to us for the spelling bee today. Told you I'd be late. That's right, you did. You gonna win the medal? Boy, I hope so. It's my last chance. You have the whole weekend to study. I'll help you if you like. Mom, if I won, would you put my medal on the desk in the hall, too? Of course. Would you take Marjorie's out of there and just let mine show? Well, I imagine there's room for two trophies, Stephen. Well, at least tell Marjorie she can't play a record so I can study. Now, Stephen. This is it, Marjorie's cup. Isn't it dopey looking? Whenever I have to clean the hallway, I don't even dust it. And this is when I found the envelope. At first, I didn't know what it was. It wasn't even sealed. So I opened it. And there they were, 200 words, typewritten. On the top it said, sixth grade spelling bee. And I saw some of those words. I saw enough so I knew I was in trouble. Mom? 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 Yes, Mom? You see this? You know what it is. Oh, just a minute, please. Hello? Hi, Edna. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I don't think that's anything to worry about, Edna. Our income tax was questioned last year when we had all that dental work for Marjorie. Marjorie had to have braces on her teeth, so I couldn't go to camp. Oh. Well, contributions are a problem. Ted figures it out somehow. Ted's my father. Well, what did you put down for church contributions? Three hundred dollars? Well, the four of you. A dollar each, every week, for a whole year. And you never miss a Sunday. Three hundred dollars seems very reasonable. One dollar times four people times 52 weeks. That, that's only $208. Oh, I would be too concerned about it, Edna. They'll understand. Tonight? Oh, we can, Edna. My father's drugstore is open late on Fridays. He doesn't get home till after nine, sometimes later. That's why we're having supper alone. Steve! That's Marjorie. She thinks she's beautiful. I don't. I called you three times. Why don't you ever answer? I was studying my spelling words. When I call you, you come. It's just as though Mother called you. It is not. It is so. Tell him it's so, Mother. You should answer when Marjorie calls you, Steve. So how come she never answers when I call her? Because you're only an infant. Besides, nobody has to study spelling. Well, if you're so smart, spell paradox. Pick a tough one. You don't know how, that's why. P-A-R-A-D-O-X. Satisfied infant. You know, just once. I wish he'd get something wrong. Just once. Can you spell osmosis? I really hate her sometimes. Once I dreamt I was driving a car, and I ran over Marjorie. Then I got worried, and I peeked into her room to see if she was all right. She
she was. You're just jealous because you were never picked for a spelling bee. You won't ever grow up. The cup I won was for general scholastic achievement, little boy. I wasn't interested in competing for some mousy-looking little rusty medallion. That's all you know about it. It's silver. Real silver. Leave it alone. Mother, guess what happened to Janie Fergus today? She bought a skirt downtown. Big deal. I'm talking to Mother. The ticket said $8.98, but when the clerk wrapped it, she said, that'll be $3.98, please. That's all she asked for, $3.98. How could that be, dear? Well, Janie showed me the price tag. It did look like a three instead of an eight. Janie's so lucky. Nothing like that ever happens to me. That's cheating. It is not. The sales girl made the mistake, not Janie. I would have done the same thing. Then it must be cheating if you do it. Janie is not a dishonest person. Mother, I won't stay in this room if he's going to insult my friend. Stephen, we don't know the circumstances, and it's wrong to accuse a person when you don't. She can say anything she wants about my friends. Just don't criticize her friends. No matter what they do, they could be gangsters. Mother, he'll have to apologize before I eat at this table. All right. I'll apologize, but what I said is true anyway. I did apologize, but I'm not going to show you that because it's too embarrassing, even for me. Well, anyway, I was studying my words that night. I wasn't doing too good. Marjorie had a record on, and I mean loud. So I moved into the hall. Now, don't ask me why I did it. But I slipped another peek at those words. I mean, there they were, and... Yeah, I'm here again. And I tried not to think about them, but there they were. Hi, Steve. What you got? Nothing. Take a look at this. Isn't that nifty? Boy. Don't touch it. I promised Miss Adams I wouldn't take it out of the box. Gee. Read what it says on the other side. First prize, field day athletic competition. Wow. They have to engrave my name under there. I'll bet it's worth a hundred bucks. The spelling medal's worth two hundred. Go on. It is, I heard somebody say. You're just saying that because you didn't win this medal. The only reason I didn't win that medal is because of my arm. Besides, I saw you win that 50-yard dash. Mr. Bergman should have disqualified you. I know I started before the whistle. Mr. Bergman talked to me about it. He said I came in so far ahead of everybody else that I would have won anyway. He said just not to be so nervous and start so fast, so he forgave me. Well, I would have disqualified you. That's because you want my medal. You probably stood there begging me. I did not. You cried a bit. Boy, I'm never coming here again. You can do your own study. How do you like that? Just the same as break my arm for him, and he won't even help me study. I know. I know it's my fault. I'll apologize to him tomorrow. Anyway, friends aren't like sisters. This will make you squirm the way sisters do. It looks better that way. Steven, I think it's time for you to go to bed now. Spelling be here now. Hey, Mom? Yeah? One dollar times four people is four dollars, right? Yes. And four dollars times 52 weeks is two hundred and eight dollars, right? What on earth are you talking about? Well, you told Mrs. Morgan on the telephone that $300 seemed reasonable enough to you on the income tax. <laughs> Steve, what are you this week, the tax collector? Don't laugh, Mom. I'm sorry, Steve. People are asked to estimate contributions on the tax return. But what if you know first about something, like Janie in a skirt? Steve, people, good people, do funny things sometimes if they're tempted by something that looks easy. Like starting a race before the whistle? Something like that. Crazy, huh, Mom? Something every person has to figure out for himself, really. What you're after has to be worth how you get it. And the other way around, too. What's this, Steve? Nothing. Just something I have to figure out for myself, I guess. Well, here I am again. A little mixed up, to tell the truth. I mean, about income tax and races and skirts and things. But if I can win that spelling bee and get that medal, I can give myself something to brag about for once. And Marjorie something to think about. 
I didn't mean to see those words. I mean, is it cheating if you didn't mean to see them? And anyway, it doesn't seem as bad as some of the things I saw around here today. What should I do with this? What would you do? What are you doing here, Charlie? Can I talk to you a minute, Mr. Bergman? Sure. Come on in. I have something that belongs to you, Mr. Bergman. Yeah? Here. There it is. I've been searching for this all weekend. I figured I must have put it in my desk drawer here. I didn't mean to take it, Mr. Bergman. Honest. I don't even know how it got in my notebook. Really. I believe you, Steve. Only... Only what? I looked inside, Mr. Bergman. I didn't mean to, but I did. And, and once that happened, accidental like that, it got easier and easier to peek in every once in a while. I'm sorry, Steve. So with that envelope, it doesn't seem like such a good way to win a medal. So, I don't think I'll take part in that spelling bee today. But that's the only way I know how to fix it up. Put the green readers out, Steve. We'll be using them when we come back from the auditorium. Oh, and Steve. If they gave a medal for courage, there'd be two trophies on that desk in the hall. Right now. That Mr. Bergman is the nicest teacher in the whole world. He's nicer than any five guys put together. You know something? When things look easy, like, like skirts, and races and envelopes and things, they turn out being hard. It's all mixed up. It's a paradox. P-A-R-A-D-O-X. Well, that's all I wanted to tell you.